So you want to know the number one secret to become a profitable options trader. Let me tell you one thing. Firstly, it's not some magical trading strategy. So if that's what you thought that this video is going to be, I suggest you go watch something else. But if you want to understand the mechanics on how to trade and more specifically how to sell options properly, then this video, I guarantee you, will compound your returns exponentially once you A, understand the secret and B, start applying them in your trading. And the good thing about this video is going to walk you through what it is and then what i'm going to show you is a live trading example of me applying this in practice so you can watch this video over and over again i've got visual examples so you can see what happens over time of how i'm able to take positions and put them in better scenarios for me so if that all sounds a bit cryptic let's get right into the video make sure you like and smash that subscribe button if you find any value from this video so what is the number one secret? It is managing positions which go against you. Now, this might sound obvious on the surface, but what no YouTuber actually teaches you is how do you actually do that? And the number one kind of guidance that is out there is put a stop loss in. Now, if you're trading stocks or Forex and things like that, I get stop losses. But when you're trading options and when you're selling options and you have the concept of rolling, time decay, days to expiration, time value, entrance, all these kind of things related to options, stop losses are not your friends. And I'll, in, in the example we go through, we'll go through why potential stop losses are not your friend. And what I've done here is I've built my own kind of mechanical way of managing positions, which go against you. And the classic example is, let's say you sell a put on Apple, for example, and the price breaks through your put strike. Now, traditionally, if you're doing like the wheel strategy and you like Apple at that price at the put value, then you'll just take assignment of those shares. But what I've learned over the course of the last three years is, especially with the downturn in the market, the wheel strategy is not a very good strategy in my view overall. In the example I'm going to show you and how I trade now is I don't look to take assignment. Yes, you can get early assigned, all these different things. But in this example, we'll, we'll walk through, I'm here to capture premium and make money through the concept of selling premiums. So without further ado, let's go into a live example and I'll go through and walk every step of the way. I put a bit of time in putting the visual and the charts together so you guys can see this. So again, if you find value in this, please make sure you smash the like button. And let's get right into it. So the trade we're going to go through or the anatomy of the trade is the Russell 2000 ETF IWM. Now, what we have here, let's see if I can show my mouse here. We have got a chart here where the black line is the stock price and we'll see, and this will build over time. And we have the put strike in red and the put break even in blue. Now, full disclosure, these colors change as time goes on because I add different things onto here that I'll explain when we get there. So if you look on the right hand side, I sold a classic. I think it was like a 30 to 40 day expiration ending on the October monthly cycle, selling the 175 put, which you can see here by this red line. Stop price is 186.83. It was about a 20 delta, 16 delta put. And I collected $1.16 credit. Again, one contract, so times by 100 shares. So I made $116 that was deposited into my account. Now, I've put the break even in here because it will come more relevant as time goes on. So, the break even is your put price minus your credit received. So, my put break even is 173.84. Now, the goal of this is your, it's your classic, it's your classic put. And what I was looking to do, as I always do, is manage my winners early, is take this, this trade off the table when I make 50% of the credit received. So that is around 55, 56 odd dollars. I'm looking if I can buy back the option for 55, 56 dollars, I will walk away a happy man and do other trades. Now, again, I do, I've got about 20, 30 trades on at a time. And this is just one of my trades. Again, the probabilities of this trade working out is 70, 80%, but things don't go always to plan and you're going to have trades that go against you. And here is an example of how we can manage this situation. So that's where we are. Standard bread and butter put option. We've got no, no problem there. 
So as time goes on, we we now have our put tested. So you can see here, again, this current price is 176.74. But again, it got down to our break-even price of 173 and 173.84, as you can see here by this line. Now, at this point here, we are approaching what I call 21 days to expiration. So when my option gets to 21 days to expiration, I look to roll it out to the next cycle. So we're currently in September and I've got an option that expires in the October cycle. So what I'll be looking to do is roll this option into the November cycle. Again, we've got $1.16, 175 per 173.84. So if we look at the kind of PL on this position, the position is down. So if I was to close this position today, I would lose money. So this is your classic problem that a lot of traders have when they sell options, especially put options or call options, is that the price goes against you and starts challenging your put strike or your put strike break even. So what do we do from here? So the first thing I decided to do was roll down and out into the November cycle. So what that basically means is we had, I think it was at the one said we had the 175 strike. I bought back the 175 strike, obviously for a debit, and then I rolled out and sold the, in the November cycle the 173 put. So I rolled down from 175 to 173, which is why you can see that there. And I picked up a net credit of 78 cents or 78 dollars. So if we look at my running total credit, is if you look before, I made one dollar sixteen off the first one made an additional 78. Therefore, my total credit on this trade is $1.94. So now what we've got here is our break even. Obviously, we've gone down and strike to 173. If you minus the 174, our break even now is 171.06. And what you'll find is when we, as we walk through this, is the whole point of managing positions that have gone against you is to keep picking up premium or credit. And once you keep picking up premium and credit, it adds to your break even. And what you'll see over time is that break even will start to widen. And eventually, what will happen over time, especially if the stock keeps going against you, is you will pick up such a break even that the stock has to do another 10, 15, 20% move for it to even get past your break even. So eventually, over time, you'll be able to buy back this option. So, that's what we did here. We rolled down and out. So we took risk off the table going from 175 to 173. Did that for a credit. So I rolled down by $2 for a credit and also lowered my put break even because my put break even was 173.84 and now it's 177.06. So again, I'm de risking myself here. And you can see that uh, IWM is now out of the money trading at 174 against the put strikes of 173. Now, for those who know I, IWM, it started to go even further. As I mentioned, these colors start to change. We now have the put strike in red, which it's always been, and the put break even in dashed red. What I did here is as IWM started to challenge my break even price, IWM is at 171.22, and you can see that my, my put break even is 17706. So it's pretty much at my break even price. Because I'm still in the November cycle, I'm not at 21 days to, expir days to expiration. What I decided to do was move this position into a strangle position by selling a call against my put. Now, basically, now what that means is. I now need, if you look at this uh, blue line here, so I sold a call at the 184 strike. So this blue line here and then the dashed blue line is the call break even. So what I need is between this hard line blue line and hard line red line, I need IWM to stay within this kind of range or stay within my kind of break even zones. So if we look at what we did here, we take it step by step. I sold the 184 call, I picked up a dollar credit. Now that dollar credit gets added to our total credit. So we go back, our total credit was 194. We added an extra dollar. So now we've got $2.94 of total credit in this trade. 
And so our call break even is 184 plus 2294, which gives us 186.94 here, because obviously it's going to the upside. Now, the beauty of selling the call is twofold. One is we picked up an additional dollar of credit. So now, even though I've not moved my put strike, I've added an additional uh, dollar to the break even to 170.06. Now you can see that line drops down. And now IWM, I now have a lot more cushion, one, uh, $1.22 between uh, the current price and my put break even. So if we look at the overall strangle position, IWM has is towards my put side, but has staying within my break even zone. If we go back here and look at where IWM was, I think if we go back a couple of slides, we started at 186.83, 176. 174 and now 171. So the stock's really gone against us. Now, if we go back to the concept of having a stop loss, right, at 2x your premium received, let's say, so you're willing to get out of this trade for best part of $6, you would have been out of this trade a long time ago because this trade completely went against us, adding more and more pressure across there. And as I said, I, think, I said that there was two advantages of doing the call. One is obviously generating the additional premium to widen out our break evens on the trade and keep collecting premium. The second reason is that it helps neutralize our deltas. And for those who don't know, delta is your directional exposure risk or the equivalent of holding X number of shares of the stock. So I don't have the deltas on here, but I would imagine my deltas around here were probably around 40 to 45. So therefore, every dollar. IWM moved, I was feeling the pressure as if 45 shares were going against me. Adding this call against here has given me additional deltas on the, given some additional short deltas, which I don't know what it was. I can't remember, but let's say it was 20. So therefore my overall delta exposure has gone from 40 to 20. So when IWM goes down, I'm feeling the exposure of only 20 shares as opposed to 40 shares. So the volatility swings in my PL will be a bit more calmer having this call on. So that's, again, the two reasons why I've done that, but primarily is to add more credit to the trade so I can widen out my break-evens. So we're still within the, we're still in October within the to a November cycle. The price, again, decides to go slightly up, up a little bit, which was good. So as you can see here, it's IWN went a bit high and it stayed within our two kind of main put strike and our call strike. But then it continued to go down and made another low down to 170.27. So when that happened, if I go back here, 170.27 and my put break even is 170.06. So it was getting close to my break even point, as you can see here. So what you do in this scenario as part of the mechanics that I teach is that we're not at 21 days yet. So we're still within the November cycle. So we roll down the untested, or we roll the untested side. So the untested side is the call. The call here is making us money, is printing us money. The put is losing us money. So by rolling down the call, by bringing the call closer to the current price, you're going to pick up a credit in the same cycle. So what we did was we had the 184 call. We rolled down to the 180 and we picked up another 66 cents or a $66 credit. So we add that to the total credit, which now is $3.60. And our call break even has widened, even though the call break even has come down, but the gap between the strike and the break even has gone up and we've got 183.60. Put strike stays the same throughout this whole cycle. As you can see, since I rolled it down into the November cycle, we have not moved that put strike. It stayed exactly where it is. And we have uh, 173. We then take that 66 cents and add it to our total credits. Now we've got $3.60 on the put side. And now that brings our put break even to 169.40. And as you can see throughout time, that put break even is getting wider. And you can see here, it just goes down a little bit as we make that move, is widening within there. So similar to where we were here, we're in the same situation, giving ourselves some more room to breathe. And again, this is a pretty big move for IW. IW is an index, right? Yes. Okay. It's with small caps, but 
going from wherever it was when I started uh, adding this 190 to 170, it is a very big move. A $20 move inside an index is there. And everyone knows that the stock market over the last well, like, few weeks and stuff has seen a bit of a downturn uh, in there. But again, managing the position, and this is the pieces that you guys need to learn if you want to become a profitable options trader, is to understand this. IWM drops again, right? And as you can see, here's that my put break even then gets tested, gets blown through. So what do we do? We're still not at 21 days in the November cycle. We're still in October. The price is now 168.82. We roll down again. So we rolled from the 180 down to the 178, picked up an additional 42 cents of credit. Therefore, total credit is 402, break even is 182.2. Put strike again, we haven't changed, even though it's been up and down going in and out the money, but it's now made another low since I started selling at whatever it was at 180 odd. You can see here now I put my put break even to 168.98. So again, we want to keep rolling down or rolling the untested side. So in this example, it's the call. We roll the call down again as we bring the call further to the closer to the price. We are picking up a credit by doing that. Yes, what you're doing here is you are opening yourself up to whipsaw because if IWM goes up, you see the gap here between the strangle is narrowing as we're making as we're making the, these adjustments. But because we'll be rolling this out at 21 days to hopefully some more favorable strikes, I'm okay with that because I were the, for IWM to go from here to start challenging my call strike. It's quite a way away. And also I've got also a nice break even cushion as well at 18202. So these are the mechanics that I stick to to keep me in the game and keep managing this position. So we finally get to 21 days. And you can see here that IWM continues to go down and blows through my put strike. So what I decided to do here is IWM was trading at 164.14. I, at 21 days, I rolled to a straddle position. So what a straddle position is where your put strike and your call strike is exactly the same. So you can see here that the red line and the blue line converge together. And we now have the 165 straddle. So now we have moved our strikes to the 165 straddle. And what we have here, we did that move for a $1.54 cent credit. So our call strikes are 165. We add on the 556 total credit. Our break even is sitting at 170.56. Our put strike is also at 165. We minus $5.56 on the total credit that we received. Our put break even is now 159.44. So now you can see. Now, if you look at the whole range from the call break even to the put break even, we have now widened our break evens for IWM now to be just out, out of the money from our put break even. And again, we go back to this move here from where we were, we're at 168, went down to another $4, it went down. So from 180 to 164. And you can see here, if you look at the put side, the break evens have just increased. Now look at the gap now between the strike and the break even to when we first started. First adjustment, second adjustment, third adjustment. You can see here that it's all about this game is all about collecting credits to widen those break evens because eventually the stock has to comply. It may continue to go down. If it does, I will roll down this call and go into what's called an inverted strangle. So this is where we are today on Friday's close to show you where we are inside this overall position. So I will be keeping you guys updated on this because I want to show you guys and take you guys through to the end of this overall trade. So you guys can see the outcome of how I can exit this position for either a break, even a small loss, or hopefully even a, even a profit. But again, if we go back to the beginning of what is the key of being a, a profitable options trader, it, again, it's all about managing these types of positions. Very rarely it happens, but you have to know what to do to be able to do that. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. And 
What I want to show you guys is if I was to close this position today, so we've got the IWM uh, options chain, we're going to buy back the 165 straddle. It's going to cost me $11.05 to buy it back. My total credit, as we talked about through all the rolls and everything that we've done, is your $5.56. So my P&L at the position, if I was to close this position today, which I'm not going to do, is $5.49. Now, if we go back to the beginning of where the original credit that we picked up, which was one 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 dollar sixteen. So it'd be three X, that's minus minus three hundred dollars loss that you probably would have taken from a stop loss perspective. We are slightly above that at the moment. But again, we've got time on our side. And again, as you can see, it's trading around this level. We've got the 165 straddle. Is we are still within our break even at the moment of what was it? 159.44. So again, our break even is up here right and prices over here it could continue to go down but again i know the mechanics and what i need to do to be able to do this again this is one where i think you have to watch it a couple of times to understand the roles why i did that why i did all these positions but this is why if you want to be a profitable options trader you will get trades that go against you you have all hand puts that have gone against you but you, you guys either take assignment or shares and then those shares never come back and that's the traditional wheel strategy and that's not what I want from you guys. I want you guys to put the call on, roll down and out, do that, fight for this position. And eventually, as you can see, and I'm proving it here, that you can build up your break evens. Now I'm in a place where when I was here, I was in a lot of trouble over here, but because you've got the option of rolling and picking up credits, all we need is IWM just to get back to, what's that, 165, 166, and this option will start decaying this 11.05 will drop to 10 9 7 8 and once this thing shows five dollars fifty cents i don't really want to get out of this trade for break even or money on this trade but anyway my point being here is this there hopefully will start to come in as price starts going back up to 165 and again if you look at the technicals it's oversold all of these different things inside it but again i'm not concentrating on the technicals i'm following price I'm adjusting my strike. So if you look at where I started, where did I start again? I can't remember myself. I started at the 175 put strike and now I've got the 165 put strike. So I've de-risked $10 from 165 or 175 all the way to 165. So I have actually moved my put down while obtaining credits. I'm not done anything for a debit yet. And again, I might need to do some debits if things go wrong or even even there. But again, I'm so comfortable with this trade and IWM is such a liquid underlying that eventually I will get out of this trade as a profit. And this is why I have the confidence why I don't think I can lose on the trade. Unless I get early assigned or some algorithm or bot assigns me to IWM shares, which again, it's not the end of the world. I'll probably just either just sell the shares and but even if i did get a sign it's not really what's the price 164 and what's it's only like a dollar inside the money so it's not that it's not that much difficult in terms of where, where we are so like i said i really hope you've enjoyed this if you guys want to learn this stuff and how to become a profitable option trader faster again click the uh, join button for my one-to-one uh, -one coaching and i should see you guys on the other side